Hey, it's Chris Goffin. In this training video, I want to show you how to protect your next wholesale deal from other investors trying to steal it. And it's one simple piece of paper. You'll learn what it is, how to fill it out, and how you could get a free copy. If you haven't seen my training on how to fill out the purchase agreement with the seller, there's a link in the description. So here's what happens. You work hard at finding a great deal, negotiate with the seller, sign a purchase agreement, you start marketing your list and maybe even post it online looking for a buyer and bam, only to find out that the property's already been sold. You're trying to figure out what in the just happened. There's some greedy investors out there and it's the reason why I wanna show you exactly how to prevent it. Yes, there are a lot of deal stealers out there. Surprise, surprise. Think about it. You sign a contract at one price, then another investor speaks with the owner and offers a little more. The owner then signs a contract with them. Why? Because the seller is motivated. They need money. They want to get rid of the burden and they probably don't care about you or the contract you signed with them. Then the new buyer closes on this deal super fast so you never figure it out. And at the end of the day, you can't do anything to the buyer. You could, however, sue the seller for breach of contract spend thousands of dollars hiring an attorney and hope you could get some money from the seller. But most people aren't going to do that. Look, it happened to me years ago, and it's how I figured out how to protect myself so it doesn't happen again. Now, before I dive in and show you how to protect your next deal, click that like button and subscribe to my channel to receive more training videos just like this one. An Affidavit of Memorandum An affidavit clouds the title and protects the investor so the seller cannot sell the property to someone else without passing a clouded title. An affidavit is a written statement to which the validity is sworn before an officer who is authorized to administer an oath or affirmation. In this case, you are swearing to a notary that you do indeed have a signed contract with the seller. Now, you will not need the seller's signature when recording this document. This document should be recorded where your county files all real estate deeds. The notary will fill out the bottom of the page and will file the document. There will be a small fee for recording it. Once the document is recorded, you are done with this step. Recording fees can range from $25 to $150. So let's talk about this process from the beginning, as well as let's dig in and actually fill out one of these affidavit of memorandums. So the first thing you want to do is print the affidavit. Now, this is just in a PDF or Word document you could have on your computer, and it would be a great idea if you print out two copies in case you mess it up, but don't fill them out yet. Next, you're going to take it down to your county recorder's office. So this would be the county where the property is located, not where you live, but where the property is located. You're looking for where they record all real estate records. You can always call them and make sure you're heading down to the right place. Next, fill it out in front of a notary. Now, there'll be a notary at the recorder's office, but you could have it notarized just about anywhere. It would just save you a trip if you did it all in one place. So let's now fill out the affidavit of memorandum. Now, if you're an REI Pro member, you can simply pull up any property you have saved to REI Pro. In step six, you can click to download a copy of this. If you're not an REI Pro member, you can sign up for a free trial and explore everything that REI Pro has to offer, including lead generation, CRM, direct mail, property analysis, and our proven workflow system that's helping investors close more deals. It's everything you need all in one place. You can sign up for free by going to www.myreipro.com. Now remember, you want to print two copies of this just in case you mess one of them up. So you're in your car heading down to the county recorder's office and you're letting them know that you need to notarize an affidavit and have it recorded. So let's start at the top here. You're going to see the state of county of, again, the notary can put that information in. Before me, the undersigned authority on this day personally appeared. So here, of course, you would be putting in your name, who being first duly sworn deposes and says that... Number one, an agreement for purchase and sale of the real property described in attached exhibit A was entered into and between the affiliate as buyer and blank as seller on blank day of blank month of blank year. Now here you're actually putting the date you signed the contract with the seller, not the closing date you have with the seller, but the date you two actually signed the agreement. And one of the best parts about this affidavit is that you don't need the seller to sign it. 
because you are swearing to the world that you do indeed have a signed contract to purchase with the owner. Number two, the closing of the purchase and sale of said real property per the terms of the agreement is to take place on or about blank. So whatever closing date you put on the contract with the seller needs to go here. After this date, the affidavit is null and void. So if there's ever a time you may need to extend the agreement with the seller, it'd be a good idea to go through this process again and put in the new closing date. Number three, a copy of the agreement for purchase of sale of said real property may be obtained by contacting blank, whose mailing address is blank and whose telephone number is blank. Here you're going to enter your name and if you're working out of your home, it might be a good idea to get a P.O. box or even a UPS box with a real mailing address. And of course your phone number because if there's ever someone that's questioning that you have an agreement with the seller, you're going to need to show proof. You'll now date and sign. Keep in mind that you're doing this in front of a notary. The bottom portion will be filled out by the notary and that's it. I want to point out at the bottom where it says exhibit a description of real property, also known by street and number. I added this to the form because some counties may require you to identify the address. It's not a big deal because investors aren't usually scouring the county records, but if you could take this out, I would go ahead and do it. And if you could take it out, again, you would want to take it out in the beginning of this affidavit as well. But if you're not sure if it's required or not, just keep it out. And if they tell you it needs to be there, you can always add it on the fly. Once you submit the affidavit, you'll need to pay the recording fee. Next, go home. Yes, you are done with this step. It's that easy. Now you can start marketing your buyer's list so you can get the property sold quickly. Now what happens if the seller tries to close this deal so somebody went around your back, signed another agreement with the seller, what in the world happens? Well, let me share with you what's going to happen and what's going to take place. So even if the seller did sign with somebody else, number one, they're going to have to go to closing, right? So when a seller and buyer submit their contracts to the title company or closing attorney, the first thing they will do is a title search. And when they do this, guess what's going to pop up? That's right. The affidavit pops up, which shows previous interest in the property. So this affidavit has to be released in order to continue the closing. And guess who is the only person that can release it? That's right. You. So now the closing will stop until they call you and you'll need to show proof of this agreement you have with the seller. You're going to need to show this to the closing attorney. Now, this is all assuming that this closing is happening before the closing date you have on your agreement with the seller. So now what happens? So if you and the seller come up with an arrangement that you will receive X dollar amount of funds after closing, you could just let the closing go through. Or you could stop the entire closing and make the seller sell to you. Or they would be in breach of contract and you could sue them. This happened to me years ago and I made $10,000 at closing. I could have made more, but look, here we have a seller that signed a contract with me and then turned around and sold it to somebody else. I don't know about you, but this is not how someone should do business. And in my case, the seller would have made more money if they just followed through with what they agreed to. I found out that the seller was receiving $5,000 more than what I offered, but they had to pay me $10,000 at closing. It's crazy. So let's recap this step by step. Number one, you need to sign a purchase agreement with the seller just so you could have that equitable interest and obviously give you the right to purchase the property. The next thing you want to do is notarize and file the affidavit as soon as possible. So as soon as I sign this contract, the very next thing I want to do is print this affidavit out and have it notarized and filed down in the county recorder's office. Once I do that, then I can start marketing this property to get it sold. And this is how to protect yourself from others trying to steal your deals. Now, this just doesn't apply to wholesaling. I would do this for any contract you sign with the seller. Thanks for watching and be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to receive more videos like this one. Oh, and click that notification bell and I'll see you on another training video.